I have a fake kneecap too. I was like, I understand. And they were like, you'll never ever wow. ever do anything crazy with a fake wow. kneecap. I mean, oh my goodness. a total knee replacement, right? Wow. So the surgeon is like, we didn't know it was possible. We didn't know wow. you could do that. Wow. I know, so anyway, I, I pay attention to what you guys are doing. So, wow, wow. wow. My point is. That's incredible. Yeah. Um, so this, here's, we should always give the background where we get our information. Okay. Always talk, I always like to talk about my influences. So first time I learned about compression floss, mm -hmm. Dirk Herzl, jump stretch band, oh, Godfather. Yeah. Wow. Right? He's the guy who invented the swell net. I can show you stuff later. I'd love awesome. That. Any stretch band in the world, that's Dick Herzl. Wow. Donnie Thompson comes to the house. He's like, hey, check this out. And it's really amazing. So then I'm out at Westside Barbell with Louis Simmons and working with Laura Phelps. And he is, I'm watching the guys duct tape their hamstrings before heavy squats. Oh, oh wow. And I was like, mm, I don't know if that's really what you should be doing, but <laughs> Lou is Lou. He's crazy and amazing and they get some results. And I was like, I wonder if there's a better way than putting a duct tape edge against your tissues, right? Totally. So I took some of these ideas and I started playing and iterating on Dick Herzl's original idea, right? Yeah. Of the compression floss. And it looked a little different, made my own, started choice. And then Dick ran into our good friend, Jesse, at the Arnold and was like, you're doing it wrong. Because Dick was really loving the blood flow restriction he was giving out, the inclusion training. Yeah. And we were like, no, 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 we've iterated and done this other thing. And we just found that it, easiest way to describe it is we're, it's changing some inputs into the brain, right? Suddenly the brain is like, oh, that's not a problem anymore, which mm -hmm. is a lot of times when something gets sensitized, when we change some input at the body, the brain thinks differently about it. So it could be that. Mm -hmm. We could be restoring sliding surfaces, mm -hmm. right? Just getting tissues to slide and glide again. Yeah. We could be changing joint mechanics. So it's suddenly there's some change in the system, how the system's working. Uh, we could be rehydrating and even getting blood flow back in there. We could have these occlusion. So which one of those things do I think it works on? I don't know. But when I explained that to Jesse Burdick, he was like, you mean it's like voodoo? And I was like, yeah, it is like voodoo. <laughs> That's like and then Voodoo yeah. Floss was born because Jesse Burdick named it Voodoo. So wow. thanks, That's Jesse. That's so cool. Wow. That's, the, that's the true story of Voodoo Floss. Damn. Showing all our friends. So you know okay. the real story, of course. I was there. So the key to the Voodoo Floss is context, right? So when most people are voodoo flossing or flossing, they are working in a range they think they have a problem with. So is this the only position that my knees work? Of course not. Right. What, other, what else do my knees do? These positions. Mm -hmm. So suddenly we, want, we really want to do is make sure that we're taking the tissue that we're mobilizing mm -hmm. into as many different ranges as we can Oh, wow. and having as many different exposures as we can in wow. as different ranges that we can so that we can start to expose the tissue. So I think that's the biggest mistake is that people voodoo floss and they do some air squats, right? Right. So if we take your good old fashioned lunge, mm -hmm. right? This position, mm -hmm. so awesome. I'm such a fan of getting people into these shapes. This wow. is really yeah. important, right? Very nice. But as soon as I elevate that front leg, I've just increased the demand on the back leg mm -hmm. 10x, right? Yeah. So instead of a scaled version, sometimes you guys represent this as a scaled version, mm -hmm. right? Yep. I'm saying, hey, it's not a scaled version. It's a completely different stimulus on the back leg. And True. some of the results I think people are getting from being in a split position, mm -hmm is not just compressing the leg in the front, but actually exposing this quadriceps and knee to these extension forces, which is one of the reasons we have to get the feet straight. We have to get people driving say off again, this back again. leg. You gotta get the feet straight. You gotta get the feet straight and driving off this back leg. So an easy way to suddenly challenge these positions is again, is to make this leg work in extension, right? Yeah. And then it's up to you, whatever you want to do. So when we voodoo floss, simple rules, no numbness and tingling ever, right? Okay. If you no, like, none. None. Numbness and tingling. Okay. If you feel like you're dying, what's happening? You're dying. Okay. <laughs> right? It's pretty cool. Yeah. If you feel like you're about to poo yourself, what's about to happen? 
I guess you're about you're to put yourself. You're about to put yourself. So, so listen to that body knowledge. Okay. But we tend to do 50% tension in the band. Okay. And 50% overlap, right? Okay. So our intention here is, as you guys know, so many people have a little insertional hot spots, right? So how can we change some aspect of how the tissues are sliding or even how the brain is perceiving this? And a lot of the sort of grief in the world is where all of these big common tendons come down into a bone, right? Yeah. Or this quad ligament here. Yeah. So for someone like you, who has gotten really stiff or really powerful on this leg, you know, sometimes we can change how that feels, just get a good tack on there, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Get one set, and then we go 50% tension, 50% overlap. And what I would say is most people actually don't make it tight enough the first time they kind of fart around a little bit. So we go one shaka, it's sort of a rough goal, yep. right? And then if you're trying to be cool, you can cross the area you're trying to work on, Kay. right? Yeah. And then always leave someone an escape handle. Kay. So that when you're done, you're done, you can pop it up. right? So now you have this opportunity to move in the way you want to move, right? Yeah. But being at end range is really the magic here. So whatever that looks like, on your toes from this position, put yeah. your heels down, right? Yeah. Rock back. I have horrible calves. Push so forward. Yep. Right? You could get into a lunge shape. Yep. And then try to extend the hip and get into terminal knee extension. And most people are two, right? And so yep. and then you can sides. switch the other side. There's no wrong way or right way except mm -hmm. am I exposing the tissues and I want to get as much motion while I'm doing this as I can. So how can I get more oscillation in these end ranges to make some of those changes, right? And just playing and then putting that heel down, moving around, adding rotation. This and is crazy. Suddenly. I've never done any of these now. Suddenly, I think we're just, just adding rotational load, we're adding some shear, we're adding some context. The brain is getting different input about what's going on here. Yeah. And the only thing that matters is... Can I do things is, like this too? Just sure. like anything? <laughs> Better, same, worse. Try doing butt kicks. Add a little speed to that. No one ever adds speed, but add speed to that thing. And you're like, holy moly, that's real. So the key for me is this is a pretty low level intervention. Voodoo floss is cheap. We've been knocked off everywhere on the planet. Um, you can do this yourself every day. So we can be a lot more consistent on it, right? You can do it between sets if it made you feel better. But the only thing that matters is better, same, worse. Did it feel better? Did, yeah. it, did it feel the same? Did, it did, I, did I change something, some aspect of how my brain is perceiving what's going on here? Yeah. And when you hit a threshold, you're like, I'm done. I've had enough. Yeah. Then you're done. Kind of, I'm there. Well, then Almost. take it off. <laughs> but I didn't feel the tingling or the numb, which Perfect. is very cool because it is tight. It is tight. And, uh, you know, what will end up happening is if we look at your leg right now, blood flow is going to come crashing back in. And oftentimes we see that when tissues are congested, swollen, or they've had old trauma, sometimes they just don't get the blood flow they need. And this could be a way of changing how the brain is perceiving what's going on just in the blood flow. So we know that blood flow restriction training has a huge analgesic effect, which means that if I just get the tissues pumped with blood, oftentimes they suddenly are less painful and then I can go train. Mm -hmm. So we should always be thinking that pain is not our only bar. Pain, uh, if I can help you attenuate your pain or change your pain so that you can move, that's always the game. The goal is yeah. always movement, restoring movement. Right? Wow. That's the game. It feels incredible. Of course it does, because like. there's a camera here, <laughs> and I'm me, and you don't want to make me look bad. No, no, no. She actually would, she's the most honest person I know. <laughs> if it feels, trust me, if it feels incredible, she's, she's no, serious. No, it really does. Yeah. And so, it's true. I'll tell Ben that hurts. I'm not doing it. That's right. <laughs> that's very reasonable. And you suddenly are occupying the role of my family, of my girls. They're like, Dad, I'm not doing this again. So yeah. the small voodoo band works great for oh, those wow. kind of compression. I'm trying to restore sliding surfaces. It's more, we could say it's more cutty. Especially yeah. if you put it on the skin directly, it's grippy. Yeah. But sometimes we just need to decongest the tissue. So we want to have a little bit thicker, a little bit wider. And one of the things that happens is to say you have a history of being a high level athlete. Yep. 
which means it's likely your tissues aren't perfect anymore, Correct. right? Yeah. Which means that they may not be as tolerant of some of the loading we want to do. That's correct. Right? Yep. So one of the things we say is, well, let's go ahead and spend our credits, but then we may have to have some intervention. So being able to add in a little compression mm -hmm. without movement yep. can really help manage the swelling by dumping lymphatics. I think one of the things that people kind of fail to appreciate is that we have two circulatory systems. As you know, the circulatory system, yep. heart, all that, capillaries. But the lymphatic system mm -hmm. is the sewage system of the body, yep. right? And your body makes about three to four liters of lymph a day, whatever. But the joints are all drained by the deep lymphatics. So one of the things we're getting with the work that you guys are doing is lots of repetitions of these joints in ranges that they're never exposed. And we can be getting and decongesting the joint. That's why you just have to move. This yeah. is why suddenly you're like, well, are you taking your joints through normal ranges? Yes or no, one or zero. But sometimes we need a little extra help and that manual compression, because you can get on Normatec and you can get on an H-Wave and you can ride a bike, but sometimes just wrapping something tightly because yeah. that knees, it's got the patina of being a high level figure skater for a while, right? Exactly. Yeah. So there's nothing we can do to change that. Yeah. The tissues are going to be sensitive to some kinds of loading we do. So just having a strategy to manage the congestion. So what ends up happening is a lot of times we don't manage the congestion then it's swollen, then I have inhibition, then I have less healthy tissues, then I have lack of blood flow, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So we kind of think of two things, you know, one, how do I restore the motion of the joint and the tissues around the joint? And two, you can do the same wrap, but this time go over the kneecap, oh, wow. wrap the whole system and just compress it in a big hug for a minute or two. And when we have swollen joints, we kind of can't even tell what's going on. So this is a, another way of just easily changing the health of the tissue system. And sometimes just changing the health of the tissue system by decongesting it can change how the brain's thing, thinking about it, and suddenly it's not painful anymore. Wow. So that what you can do, whatever you want to do with that knee. So that's how we think about Voodoo Another tool, not the only tool, but just another tool. I love it. I we say, love it. I would say though a fundamental tool yeah. that everyone in the joint space yeah. or with a history of joint issues should know how to do. Yeah. Yeah, so you know, I, I'm lucky that I, everyone's like, here's the best techniques and the best technology on the planet to decongest your tissues. And I'm like, that's great. Now I'm on the airplane, now I'm traveling, now I'm at office, what do I do right. then? And that's why we've found that just so simple. Everyone can do this. Yeah. And, and it gets you into motion. And usually the results that you could get off voodoo flossing will cost hundreds if not thousands of dollars. Yep. Sometimes can have negative ramifications. Yeah. And now you're reliant on that and now it's hitting your finances mm -hmm. and you can't do it when you need to do it. Yep. The fact you can do this when you want to do it, mm -hmm. then get into motion, that's, I've always said, it's better than any treatment there is. 100%, I don't know if Ben will say this I wish this I knew later. the story, now I know the story of how it came about. Totally, because we just so. call them voodoo bands. Well, and I didn't really know who was responsible for it. And, totally. And. It's, so, it saved his ankle, actually. <laughs> oh, that's true. He, a year and a half ago, came home with a sprained ankle from basketball. And literally how many days? Oh, I couldn't, like, I couldn't walk He couldn't or walk. He was now scooting I, to the basketball. I know, I know ankle sprains really well from basketball. And I remember years ago, same kind of ankle sprain, and I wasn't the same for months, months. and months and yep. months. The second time... Yep and I made a whole like flossing protocol yep. off it, I was back dunking in nine days. Yep. A doctor said that would be impossible, just how it is impossible. Been it's impossible. Yeah. It's impossible the way we used to think, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you know, I think what we're really coming back to is first principles. What is the body supposed to be able to do? Am I exposing myself to these positions and loads, tissue, and then at a sort of a tissue level, which sometimes we forget that we can actually influence a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Managing your congestion, managing your congestion meant that the tissues can kneel, knit down. It's still going to take two or three weeks to heal, four to six weeks for a bad ankle sprain. You can't, you can't heal faster than a human. But the thing is, if you don't have pain and your function's there, you can return to play while the yeah. tissues continue to, to move. And that's- and I didn't yeah. have the long-term effects. Because yeah. the first time in the same ankle, the yep. first time I had, long, even years after, it's yep. like, Oh, well that side, I don't have the same mobility yeah. because of that ankle sprain four years ago. Yeah, and I, I really like what you're talking about here, which is democratizing simple tools that are safe, yeah. that people can employ. That's really the revolution is moving, moving, giving people the tools to take care of themselves in their training environment. And remember, I'm doing this so that I can move. And the moving is the thing. I think people yeah. for always forget, you know, 
that's what that's about. Conclusion. The first yeah. 300 pages exactly. of Supple Leopard are about moving. The last 100 pages are about restoring your movement. Yeah. Beautiful. Wow. Truth. Well, thank you You're so welcome. much. It's helped m my knees massively. We'll see. we'll see if we can get it better. No, 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 no. I already, it, I did it. Well, we haven't seen you. I mean, you just, you just felt better, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> I can make you feel better with bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I've, but I've used the flossing with her on this knee, even this past year and stuff, because this is her old skating knee, and you guys saw her move cold. Very impressive movement, and she's four months pregnant. We did a video this morning, and I put her onto the scene, and she had to do knee bending and stuff, and that's on a knee that she was told she had, like, irreversible cartilage damage or something from her figure skating day. So you I'm saying have, You did have irreversible cartilage change. That had nothing to do with your ability to yeah. move nope. pain-free. But, the, but right. the flossing has been... Key. We've yeah, used yeah. it for years. For that's years. A, that's, I think that's okay. You no, know, and I think when we give people other tools, suddenly we don't have to reach for ibuprofen. We don't have to reach for yeah. right opiates. We don't have to reach for yeah. you know these things that keep us from moving. Because this, I think, I people forget you're designed to be 100 years old. And if I can get into Mark Bell's knee or hips, if we went took a picture of them, they would look like a trash dump, right? Let's be honest, <laughs> like like a raccoons on fire in a dumpster, right? But that doesn't mean he would have any pain and it doesn't mean he would necessarily have any loss of function. Right. So if there's one person in the world who can buffer changes in their joints from being an athlete or the patina of use mm -hmm. and they're pain free, that means we all can have that level of function and changes in our tissues and still be pain free and moving. Absolutely. We can all improve. <laughs> all our yeah. lives are gonna look different. Yeah. But the fact we can all improve, that's priceless. Yeah, and you know what? You know, does that mean I change some of my training? Of course. Maybe there's some things that I just need to pull back on a little bit yeah. and then spend my credits where I care. Yeah. And that's really the, the game. Because you're going to be 100 years old. Sorry. It's too, yes. it's too bad. I'm all for that. Awesome. <laughs> Killer. Thank you so much. Of course, of course. A simple must-have. Guys speaking truth. Thanks for watching. <laughs>